Hello, everybody. This is Francesco Antolini, uh, game director. And down there, the controller, we got Brian Rodriguez, uh, one of our producers. Meet you up for him. As John was saying, uh, this is just cause. It's uh, a game that, uh, you know, it's built on a conundrum system that works all together at the same time. So very often the unexpected happens. Usually when that happens, it's fun, but we're gonna see, okay? So uh, we start this presentation today uh, from this panoramic spot in Solis uh, that gives you a pretty good idea of the extent of the world. So Solis is the new world of Just Cause. It's the biggest world we have to, uh, to date, and it's also the most diverse. Uh, it's inspired by landscapes in South America. And here, for example, you can see uh, at the bottom the grasslands, inspired by the pampas. Uh, on the background, we got the desert. And if you sharpen your sight, you may see a hint to a sandstorm. But no worry, because we are going to fly pretty close to it uh, in a few minutes. And here, the alpine is entering the screen, uh, obviously inspired by the Andes. And if you're wondering whether these big clouds that it's coming in, it's hiding a tornado, you're wondering right. Uh, you've seen this probably uh, at E3 or in some of the videos that we have released. You did see that in the context of a mission, but as you see, the tornado is there, the sand, the sand storm is there, and blizzards uh, are to be found uh, in the mountains. Uh, everything is procedurally generated, everything is there uh, for your use, per use, and to just have fun with those. Uh, let's just jump down the cliff. Needless to say, uh, both uh, parachute and wingsuit uh, are back. We know how much you did love those in the previous games, so we did the extra effort uh, to perfect them uh, even more. Uh, we improved the interaction model, and we've polished the uh, animation and the way that Rico relates to his parachute and the wingsuit. The result is an experience uh, that feels extremely natural and organic. We just landed on an airstrip, uh, something is missing, I guess a plane, so why don't we drop one? So it's pretty colorful, and the reason is uh, that this plane was actually belonging to the Black Hand, so it was looking quite badass, black and red, but you are me to control of it, and it just graffiti and made it fun. Uh, because in this game, uh, Rico will indeed need to master an army and create it. The challenge is going to be tough, he can do it by himself. Uh, as you may imagine, the army is called the Army of Chaos. Oh, you see those icons dancing on the top, that's the top left of the screen. Uh, those are there to advise player about playable content that is nearby. Now they're gonna get less and less because they're gonna go up in the air. But the point is that Solis is not only the biggest world we craft so far, it's also the most rich in terms of things to do. So that widget, it's gonna alert player whether there is something to do for the revolution or for a secondary character or for a main story. Uh, and so on. So, uh, as Brian is flying over the desert, uh, you may notice that there is a certain uh, variation in the landscape itself. Like now, we are just welcoming a mine. Welcome the mine. Ooh, that it's, uh, you can tell it's desert, but it's not really desert. It looks and feels different. This is one of those things that we call sub-biomes. And uh, we need to use these to infuse variety within the biomes itself, because again, they are big. If they were all looking samey, uh, you would be bored pretty soon. And I don't want that. We just want you, we just want to give you surprise after surprise. There's the sensor. I did promise before that we would have passed nearby. I hope we don't end inside it, because one of the features of the, sand, of the sandstorm itself is that it drastically reduces your visibility. That has quite interesting uh, consequences in the way that you approach combat, but it's not something that you want while you are flying. Oh, here it's another one of my favorite, uh, probably this is my favorite sub-biome in the desert, is the canyon that goes uh, with a, a river uh, at the bottom. Now, the world is big, and it's big not just for the sake of being big, it's big because Rico moves fast. He moves fast if he's in a vehicle, he moves fast if he's in his wingsuit, and he basically teleports himself every time that he fires his grappling hook. So we literally need ground to cover. 
This time around, we also built it differently. If you've played the previous games, uh, you will remember a game that is structured in a set of island or island. In Just Cause 3, we went for more of an imposing landmass. I define it uh, positively overwhelming. And this changed quite a bit the experience. Just think about the role of water. There is no more ocean, but we got rivers that the impure Just Cause style are fully physicalized. So they got currents uh, and things can float on them according to proper fluid dynamics. And it's not only a matter of cosmesis, right? It's not only that they look and feel different, uh, they also play different. Uh, the biome uh, literally structure your gameplay space. So let's say driving on the desert uh, through the dunes is a completely different feeling uh, than driving on the rainforest where it's kind of hard to get off-road because you've got trees everywhere. Now think a bit about it. This also means that the moment that you are chased by the black hand, uh, the strategies that you're going to employ in the desert are completely different from the one that you're going to employ in the grass, the alpine uh, or the rainforest. It's like having four games uh, uh, in one. This is one of the, uh, of the town that I love the most. It's uh, inspired by Huacachina. That's a town in Peru, an oasis town, because it's built around an actual lake in the desert. And Brian was so good to collect a space ring. That I guess you can uh, imagine how that works. So uh, we talk about the world within some vehicles and some of the collateral activities. Let's get uh, straight into one of the centerpiece of the game and of the franchise, the grappling hook. So what you learned from Just Cause 3, it's back. As you see, you can tether things and you can retract them. But this time around, you can do much more than that. Indeed, you can change the attachment that you put on your grappling hook. For example, you can attach booster to it and send things spinning around. Or you can go with uh, currently the YouTuber favorites. We call it airlifter. Everybody else calls them balloons for some reason, but I like airlifter. And what they do, they defy gravity. And in this case, Brian is just sending stuff up the sky, just goes. Now, these attachments uh, are fun to be used in themselves for some reason, just fun. You modify the world. However, they become even more fun the moment that you've got props, uh, humans, vehicles, things that are built in a way that can interact meaningfully with them. So even if you take just a otherwise insignificant fuel, uh, sorry, food cart, here it is that with the addition of just a propane tank, you can make it interesting uh, once you interact, you know, with uh, airlifter, booster, or somebody else. And it's not just about attachments. Brian, let's put up the customization screen. Let, let, let's scare people a little bit. Okay, you got different loadouts, but what I want to draw your attention in, let's just go into the, uh, the airlifter one. Here it is. Uh, each attachment can actually be modified by applying different mods over it. What Brian is doing now um, is instructing the airlifter to follow Rico wherever he goes. Now, one moment because we get him game. So you see there were a set of mods for the airlifter. There are mods for the retractor. There are mods for the boosters. And you can also change uh, the strength at which each one of these operates. And at the end of the day, we made a calculus yesterday just for the fun of it. You got more than 4 million combination. This means that uh, however you are playing, if you compare your loadout to the loadout of a friend after some hours that you're playing, you're probably gonna find that they are different and he has discovered something that you haven't or that she does something different than what you do and so on. It's really uh, a tool that has endless possibilities in creative terms. I think that you can proceed and pull up the stand. So we got the airlifter attached to a red barrel. The jet up there, it could have very easily gone onto that. And now the airlifter is following Rico, wherever he goes. So Brian has just built a cloud of red barrels. What do you do with a cloud of red barrels? You rain explosions, right? Now, we've seen a food cart, we've seen a cloud of red barrel. Let's see, let's approach one of those objects where we actually put a lot, lot more love than anything else. We call them the chaos objects, because when you destroy them, you accrue chaos. Because chaos is bad, and in a meaningful way, the GC2 way, not the GC3 one. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more uh, about it in a second. So look at this, uh, this is a radar. However, when we saw this, uh, everybody in the studio thought, oh, it looks like a catapult. So you probably think that too. And uh, if you as my player think that, I don't want to frustrate you. So I want for this thing to actually work as a catapult, because it looks like it. 
And uh, so that's what we did. We rigged it in a way that if you discover it, if you want to have fun with it in this way, uh, it's going to actually make you happy. What we always say in Just Cause is, if you think about it, you can probably do it. You know, and the consequence may uh, give you a smile. So, uh, those interactions actually uh, are something that I consider relatively simple, something that I expect for each one of our players to pull off. But you can do much more complicated things, and those things are there for that slice of player who really like to go bonkers uh, and be creative uh, with the tools that we give them. To pull this off, we will start by uh, supply dropping a tank. We have uh, unlocked uh, everything uh, in this build for the sake of the demo. It goes without saying that as you play the game, you will progressively unlock your supply drops, you will progressively unlock your grappling hook attachment uh, and mods. As you've seen, uh, a novelty of 4 versus 3 is that you can precisely decide where your supply drop has to fall uh, along with the orientation. This is again something that we do for players uh, so that uh, they can have a bigger control on their setups. So uh, here Brian needs to change uh, the way that uh, both the airlifter and the booster works. And uh, he's setting uh, uh, the airlifter so that they will stop at 15 meters from the soil. So they were not, they're not going to propel things forever up into the sky. And uh, has to be indestructible. For the boosters, what he just did, he told the booster, wherever I put you in, never propel it down, okay? Only up or uh, on a plane. And uh, I guess what we've created, it's a flying deck. So what's interesting here is that the player, Brian, there is still driving the tank. And this is, uh, since we have engineered the control so that you can use your grappling hook attachments even when you are driving vehicles. At the same time, uh, everything about the tank is still working. So you can shoot your rockets and you can shoot your minigun. I think that you are approaching a front line. Front line, uh, it's these areas of perennial battle in the game. No, it's a front line. You've got an army. The army advance and advance just up to the point where the black hand, your opposing army, stops them. And where this happens, you got a front line. So the front line is basically a concrete representation of your progress uh, within the game itself. Now, I will watch this thing for hours, but I don't think we have hours here, Brian. So that we can cut it short and maybe change scenario. You bye tank. We are going to switch now to the rainforest, namely to a place called Meteolab. It's a research facility where they research lightning. Uh, in this, at this point into the game, because obviously it is a safe game, right? Uh, we did already take control uh, of Meteolab itself. This is why you don't see black hand. It's also Quite nice sunny day, so the situation is calm, it's beautiful, there's a little breeze, why don't we take a weapon? Oh, wing gun. Uh, wing gun is one of my favorite uh, because it really leverage uh, physics and what it does is basically it shoots wind, right? So it means that if you have uh, a dynamic object, whatever that is, maybe it's a person, a vehicle or, you know, just what you just seen, it will propel it. It has a secondary fire, like each one of the weapons in the game. And in this case, the secondary fire, it's a burst of wind that you are gonna use to kick this thing away. This will give us chaos. Uh, as I was mentioning before, chaos is back. And what basically does, uh, the more chaos you wage, the more people will admire you and the more people are going to join you. So doing more chaos is what you need to do to actually master people to join your army. You can see this updraft. Uh, wind is a big component of the game, and you know for sure if you've seen the tornado video. Uh, we don't have only destructive wind, there is just wind that brings you around the world, and there is what we call mechanical wind, like this one. I love this because it allows me to over in my parachute, over the base, and rain that from above. Uh, let's see what happens if we shoot the wing gun now. Fire it now. Rico gets propelled. And this is kind of a testament to how deep and coherent uh, the physics model is. Now, this said, uh, uh, I want to start a bit from uh, a mission, and uh, you may have 
uh, understood that already that what you're gonna do now we're gonna to change everything by basically calling a lightning storm so in this part in this part of the mission this bit the, the, the meteor lab is under the spell of a lightning storm and of a black hand attack and what you are asking the player to do we are asking the player to rise three lightning rods so that they will attract lightning and make the area secure for Rico and his army. So let me tell you something about the extreme weather. Uh, there were three principles that we were following uh, when engineering uh, and designing each one of the extreme weather events. First of all, we want for them to be game changers uh, in terms of we want, we want the extreme weather to change the world. And that's mostly a matter of realization, right? And if you look at Meteor Lab now, this is the same place that you've seen two minutes ago. It's radically different, right? The atmosphere is different, the feel is different, and it also plays different. Because indeed, the other two principles were, one, we want for extreme weather to be and feel challenging to players, okay? It can't just be something that you have and you walk down it. Secondly, we want it for it to be something that you could use, you could master and use to the end of the sandbox itself. Uh, not an easy challenge and each extreme weather event achieves it in a different way. So I'm gonna tell you how we did that uh, with the lining and this discovery is going to hopefully help you to make sense of what's happening right now on the screen. So lining follows a very simple rule that says if there is a character or a vehicle uh, within the vicinity of a lightning strike, the lightning is going to hit the highest one. Now, uh, I am looking more at you than at the screen, so I don't know how many times that happened. The point is that here, everything uh, happens, uh, uh, it's procedurally generated, so we don't really have uh, control when a lightning strike. Let's say if it works, the lightning should hit the chopper, and indeed, it did hit uh, the chopper. And uh, I could definitely watch this going on for hours and hours, as for the flying tanks, but again, we don't have hours and hours, so I apologize about that. Uh, but getting to conclusion, uh, uh, we just played for 15 minutes, I believe, but we've seen quite a lot of things. We've seen Solis and uh, Solis, sorry, and hopefully now you have a better idea of what the extent and the variety of the world uh, actually entail. We had uh, a very little sneak peek of the park of vehicles and weapons uh, within the game. I've mentioned that each weapon comes with a secondary fire and that vehicles themselves most of the time comes with some novelty, something new to discover, something that you can use to the, sand, uh, to the end of the sandbox. Similarly for destruction objects and prop of the world, there's always a little secret to discover, always a little interaction that will make you smile at the moment that you use the grappling hook on them. And uh, last but not least, uh, we've seen uh, a second, with Dimit, a second extreme weather event uh, after the tornado, which is the lighting storm. Thank you guys, I hope you did enjoy the demo. Woo!